They get there, and there's a service going on. And people are still getting saved. People are still getting healed. People are still getting delivered. Let's go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 and 12. Well known. Probably everybody in here can quote them. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, godly in this present world. Well, we're all for grace. He said it. Greatest song ever written. I agree. And we're so willing to accept that. But we're not willing to give back toward it. It teaches us to deny worldly lust. That means get rid of it. You know, we, uh, I've been in these mountains a few times. And I've been places where there's pretty steep mountains. And... You know, like you pack a bag, I don't think anything about a toothbrush. It's almost weightless. I can curl one about 10,000 times. I can press one about 100,000 times. Okay? Yeah. Buddy boy, you get to putting that thing in a backpack, you pick that pack up, and how did this stuff get so heavy? And I've, I've pulled it out of my bag before and sawed the handle off my toothbrush. I've drilled holes in them. I'm telling you, I can figure out some ways to cut some weight. I can carry a refrigerator near that back door. But I'm not taking it up a mountain. And every weight that we add limits where we can go. And we're told in Hebrews to lay aside sin and lay aside weights. Lay aside. There's stuff in our life that's not sin, but it's holding us back from doing what God wants us to do. We're not to the end of the race yet. And we're, we're standing around with our tongues hanging out and our hands on our hips wondering where in the world the finish line is. It's not over. Many people want to see great miracles and, and, and we see them. And people want to see God show up like He did for Daniel and Moses and Elijah and Gideon. But Gideon, his victory was not the end of his life. He didn't go out in a blaze of glory. He, he delivered the nation. He did great things. And then with the fruit of that, with the what He earned doing that, with the blessing we call it, He created a stumbling block for His family and for the entire nation. Is that what we're going to do as a church? We should live soberly, righteously, godly, I couldn't stand it. They used to have a little saying. I still don't like it. Just because of the way it came out, it comes out through the nose instead of the mouth. The word works if you work the word. Which basically is true. But it shouldn't be said like that. We're in agreement with God. I like up here. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. For Him. We treat God like a celestial guard dog. Seeking, get my husband. Get my wife. Get my kids, get my mom. Get, get that guy over there. He's for everybody but us. You know, I ask you, if you're wicked, and nobody's going to raise their hand and say they are. No, of course not. I'm good. I'm here at the church tonight. I'm not at the movies. I'm not at the bar. I'm not at a ball game. I was reading this verse in Psalm 10. You know what it says in there? God's talking about wicked people. He says, 
God is not in all his thoughts. Now, if I ask you, is God in all your thoughts? And you had to put your hand on the Bible and swear to it? Mm, boy, things get tough then. Not really all the time. According to God, that's wickedness. Now, the problem is, we've got a set of definitions. He's got another set. Let me ask you, can you walk with Him if you're not agreed? We can't. It will never work. When, I, when, when my wife and I got married, I had this little thing called a secret agenda. We were both trying to manipulate each other into the same deal. And when we got married, I said, man, all, all i got to do is just fake this and be good for a little while. Buddy, I'm going to make she is going to be this way. And man, we got married. And I turned on her and started telling her what to do and how it was going to be. And buddy boy, she turned back. Well, I found out she had the same idea about me. <laughs> and we had about four really rough years there. And we began to see, but this is going to be a long, miserable life if we keep going at each other like this. Yes, sir. And we began to, to change. And, we began, and now we've been at it more than 25 years. And, you know, it's about 15 years, I remember, because the whole, I was just like, man, you get married, you tell them. They're going to do what you say. I'm a man. And I tried that for about 15 years. Boy, it was rough. And about, after about 15 years, I don't know what possessed me one day. I looked over at her and I said, Honey, would you? And she said, Yeah. Wow. So I tried it again. And you know what? I found out that woman will do almost anything I ask her to. But if I order her, it's different. Now, where we work and stuff, there's times, man, when, when, when a situation presents itself, when there's an emergency, when somebody's sick or dying or something... Man, I'm telling you, I still look at her and say, do this. And I don't even want to hear a huh. And she's good. She understands. And it's time for that. But it's not everything that comes out of your mouth. So if I ask you, are you godly? Most of us in here say yes. All right. What do God say about it? Let's flip back a couple of pages to 2 Timothy chapter 3. Verse 12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay. We're walking with Him. We say yea to everything. His grace that we've received teaches us to live godly. And we think we're godly, we say we're godly. And we look at this. Let me ask you something else. Are you being persecuted? Hmm. Well, you know, this person doesn't like me. That's not persecution. There's people that don't like me for absolutely no reason at all. It's got nothing to do with the gospel. There's people that don't like me that have very good reason not to like me. Agree with your adversary quickly <laughs> while you're in the way. <laughs> So if we're not suffering persecution, apparently we're not as godly as we think we are. I really have a, I've got an ongoing uh, battle with, I'm from the South, so we don't use the word default, we use default. I got this running thing with default settings. Your phone, your computer, just everything's got something that it reverts to in a given situation. You know what I figured out? Christians have got that also. Because you walk in these doors and walk up, hey brother, hey, how are you doing? And the word that's got to come out of your mouth, well, I'm blessed. And you understand that word is trumps. That's the strongest suit in Christendom. It means back off, butt out, keep your nose out of my business. Hmm. 